2020 has sure been a year of disruption and change, but it has also provided unique opportunities to pivot with purpose and to gain momentum. To find out more, stay tuned. <laughs> If you're just joining us, this is the Writer's Corner live show, helping authors level up their storytelling impact and authority through the power of live video. This stream is made possible by StreamYard, Creative Edge, and BeLive Media, and I'm your host, Bridgette Lombanda from Cape Town in South Africa. To know when we go live, please go ahead and like our Facebook page so you get the notification, and please click the subscribe button on YouTube so you get the notification from YouTube as well. In today's show, we're going to be talking to the amazing authors of Momentum, 13 Lessons from Action Takers Who Changed the World. But first, let me say hello to my amazing friend and co-host, Mary Elizabeth Jackson. She's a special needs and disabilities advocate and also the author of the award-winning Poolicious children's book series from Nashville in the USA. So let us know where you are from. Mary, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to see you and I'm really super pumped for today's show. We've got some really great authors on and um, they have collaborated in an, just with a super awesome book and um, collaboration really does pay off, doesn't it? It's fun to take a journey with other people. It absolutely is and I am so stoked for our lineup today um, to help people level up and gain momentum, which is sorely needed in this time of uncertainty mm. as we move forward. And so um, a little bit more about our authors today from the book Momentum, 13 um, lessons that you can learn. Linda is Linda Sunshine West is the founder of Living Live Inc. She is, like any other entrepreneur, um, has dreams of business success. And finding herself looking up from the bottom of a steep metaphorical mountain, she says, she encounters four renowned wise men and 13 remarkable action takers who provide her with a secret of how they turn their dream into reality. And that resulted in this amazing book, Momentum, 13 Lessons from Action Takers Who Changed the World. And along with Linda, there are some, the other authors are Michael or Mike Packman. He is the founder of Keystone National Properties. He's also an accomplished speaker and a contributor to Momentum. Annie Evans is the best-selling author, coach, speaker, and she helps people become their best selves. Who doesn't want to? Mm -hmm. Then there's Patty Mays. She's the founder and CEO of Univ of Soul, a resource center that specializes in combining wholeness, spirituality, creativity with practical wisdom. Mm. Kristen Miracle is a pioneer in the field of computer science and recently re retired. She's a founding member of the Mastermind Association as well as CEO of Miracle Mastermind Inc. And she provides people with support so they can overcome adversity during these difficult times. Much needed. Dave Blackman is an author and founder of Blacklock Designs, an umbrella name for a hub of various products. Gary Krebs is the president and founder of GMK Writing Editing, Inc. He is a novelist, collaborator, ghostwriter, literary agent, and former trade book publisher and editor. And also very interesting, he was the U.S. editor of the Guinness Book of Records. Wow. I know. I thought that was fascinating. I know, right? Mm -hmm. And then last but not least is Kim Glass. She's the CEO of Soft Skills Strategy, a consulting and speaking agency that leverages soft skills to create surprising bottom line results. But let's start off with Linda, shall we? Because this was really her brainchild. Shall we invite mm. her to the stream? Yes. Hello, I'm here and I've got it. Yay. Yay, there's the book. And I this this show is full of people who are not overachievers, are they? Or high achievers? <laughs> oh, not at all. No, not, not at, all. at all. <laughs> I love it. 
Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here to talk about this project because, you know, one thing I learned during the process of momentum, like we talk about momentum and how you know, momentum keeps you going. But sometimes I, I actually equated it to pulling into a train station. You know, a train, when it gets started, it does a skip and it doesn't move. And then it does a skip and it doesn't move. And then finally it gets going very slowly. It picks up speed. But it has to pull into the station every once in a while to refuel. Well, that's what happened to me while doing this book. You know, I had the idea over two years ago. I reached out to the creator and co-founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, asked him if he would be in the book. And he said, yes, of course, let me know what I need to do. And then the founder of Ugg Boots, I did the same thing. And I was like, oh, crap, I got a book. Now I got to do something with it, you know? <laughs> so that's where my mind went. But then um, I started reaching out to some of my friends, the ones you're going to meet, you know, some of them here today and ask them if they would be in the book as well, you know, participate in this journey that I've been on. But one thing I realized, I'm going to make it really short is, is sometimes momentum, we do need to stop, we need to regroup and start over again. And that's okay. It's still about making forward progress. Sometimes we need to stop to make progress. And I got to tell you, there were at least eight times during the last two years that I felt like throwing in the towel and just saying, I'm going to scrap this thing because I didn't feel like I had what it took to make it happen. I didn't feel like I had what it took. It wasn't about the authors. It wasn't about Gary Krebs, our ghostwriter, who you're going to be meeting in a minute too. You know, it was about me, my lack of ability to think that I could finish something, but I kept going and here we are. We've got the book We're out today, you know, talking about it. And I love it. We became a bestseller you know, on Amazon in less than six hours. And so we've got momentum going. And this whole story is about, you know, taking action and making things happen in your life. So thank you so much for having us. Awesome. At some point, sometime when we, I know we don't have time today, but you, you'll have to tell authors who are trying to become bestsellers on Amazon, what the formula is for that. So that'll be another time. So okay, just cool. be another teaser. show. <laughs> teaser. Yeah. Teaser. <laughs> Absolutely, because I think that's kind of, you know, what every author, that's every author's dream yeah. is to have a book that's a bestseller. Um, but there's a formula to doing that the long way and a formula to doing the quick way. And I think every single author wants the quick way. Mm -hmm. So you're going to join us next time when we get Linda back on to give you the scoop on how to become a bestseller the fast way. <laughs> awesome. I love so, it. Absolutely. So let's let's welcome Michael Packman to the show, shall we? Hi, thank you for having me. Mike, hi, welcome. Yes. Thanks. Like, love your last name. <laughs> yes. Love, yes, awesome. It, it wasn't fun as a kid, but from I bet adult, I was just going to say, how was that as growing up? <laughs> oh, it was tough. It was tough. The you know the, <laughs> the, the playground fights over it, but now it's a <laughs> now you it's get become. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it definitely wasn't fun at five or six years old, but now. It's uh, it's great because everybody loves the name. Yeah. Everybody remembers me from a business perspective. So it's 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 turned into a real blessing, like mm -hmm. so many things in life, right? What we think could be bad at one time turns into some of our greatest gifts. Yeah. So talking about that, what would you say to your younger self right now, looking back from being uh, an author of a best-selling book to the time when kids were teasing you at school about your name? <laughs> what would you say to your younger self? Um, you know what, just it's. You know, it's all about taking every moment as it comes and and just you know that, that that's a big thing for me with the meditation is is you know trying to be present you know which is you know ground yourself and be present and you know everything always this this world is always changing right so the bad times don't last forever unfortunately the good times don't last forever either so you know really really cherish those times when things are going well but know when things are tough to just you know not only will things shift but also sometimes some a lot of times when those difficult things that you're going through can turn into blessings in the in the future so you know don't don't look at everything uh for what it is at the moment you know it can turn into something a lot better in the future so you know just just being present and accepting everything that's you know that that's very big is to uh just take things as they come and just be present with them Yes. Mike, can you give us a brief synopsis of your chapter in Momentum and what the story is behind your chapter? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's uh, having charisma, winning people over with charisma, which is, you know, it's all about, you know, the energy that we have behind. So, you know, all our actions, all our emotions, it's all about the energy that we have inside and projecting that out. Uh, so, 
you know, when we're passionate about what we do, when we're, we're loving what we do and we're in that space, who we, when we're, basically when we're acting as we truly are, people see that and people are attracted to that. And that's what makes us successful. That's what makes us great speakers, great authors, great business people, uh, what are, great teachers, whatever it is we're doing is just do something that you love and, you know, be passionate about it and it's going to come through. Uh, and then we also talked a little bit about meditation. It's, uh, I went to India with Tony Robbins eight years ago and uh, ended up uh, being introduced to meditation. And now it's something I usually do for an hour or more a day. And uh, mm. it really helps to make me a lot calmer and uh, able to deal with, you know, everything I, I do. I've got multiple businesses and two little kids. And uh, so a lot to juggle. There can be a lot of stress there. And uh, the meditation really, really helps. You know, when you get up first thing in the morning and, and, you know, your routine is to get up and meditate first, it helps prepare you for everything that you're doing in the day. Amen. And I attest to that. I, <laughs> that is my sacred space. Every, I have to do it every morning because it does. It helps the day unfold uh, much better than what it possibly could because you've got kind of you're you're in line, you're grounded, your ducks are in a row, <laughs> and then you can <laughs> waddle out into your world, right? Yeah. So, you know, you have a lot of value for parents out there who are trying to be entrepreneurs and parents. I know I'm one of them, so it can be quite challenging. So, um, hey, we all have blue on oh, right here in the, yeah, look, <laughs> bright blue. Um, but uh, uh, that was a squirrel moment. But anyway, um, yeah, it's that, that's a lot of great value for folks out there who are trying to to multitask and do it successfully. And that's one of the important keys is doing it successfully. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. It really, really helps. And just, it, it, it does. Helps you, it helps you, you know, it helps you, you know, be more aware. So, you know, as you feel yourself, you know, getting frustrated or upset or, you know, any, any emotion, any negative emotion that comes up, you're, you know, you're more able to see those you know, as not you, but it's just something that's happening at that moment and not to get caught up in it. Right? So that, you know, when you when you can meditate in the morning, it sets your day to be able to handle a lot of that much better. Mm -hmm. That is excellent advice. Mike, I know that you are not able to stay for the entire duration of the show. So can you let people know how they can connect with you? Because that's pretty important. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, our, our website is um, www.knpre.com. Um, you can email me at mp at knpre.com, uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for having me on the show. It's it, really exciting to be a part of Momentum and, and, uh, you know, for, first time out as an author, it's, you know, um, I'm, you know, I, I run businesses. This is, I've never written a book before and, uh, co-authoring a book and having it a bestseller right away. That's, that's a good way to start. Hey, Thank listen, you, Linda. Yes, I got my coffee like too. Your shoes. Yes. What a way to come out as an author. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's gold advice right there. So if you're watching the show and you on the fence about writing your book, this is something that, that Linda talks about often. You know, if you, if you, if a good way to dip your feet into getting into um, becoming an author, because that gives you uh, a badge of authority mm -hmm. is to co-author. You know, and if you want to know about how to go and, and co-author a book, Linda's the person you want to connect with. Go reach out to her. Yes. Thank you to Linda and to Gary for, you know, w w without the two of them, uh, we wouldn't have this uh, amazing collaboration. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Man, next up, we're going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to invite um, Anne to the screen. Annie Evans, welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Hi. Really great to be here. Congratulations to all of us, especially Linda and also Gary Krebs for um, putting this all together. And I, um, I am a realtor and I also help teach financial literacy and help people with building their wealth. And I'm, I'm known as a start over expert because I've had to start over many, many times. And so I believe in encouraging people to really look at um, themselves deeply and let go of all the negative. My first chapter was on, you know, eliminating the negative, which often comes from people outside of us and to really build up our positive and um, and know, especially in times like this where we're 
all living in fear and uncertainty. We have no idea where this came from or where it's going to go. But know that we have the power to find new opportunities and new ways to manage our lives and create new things. And so we just need to um, move forward with it. And my other chapter is, you know, pretty much act as if. And a lot of times in my life when I had to start over and I knew I really wanted something and that I would be good at it. I mean, it's all about honesty and integrity but sometimes you really have to put yourself out there and just own it. And mm -hmm. so that's where I came from. I also have my, my own bestseller that has a lot of stories about me and all the things that I've gone through. And um, so live for a new day, you can reach me at um, liveforanewday.com. It's a little, it takes a couple seconds to <laughs> load up right now, but other than that, um, I'm a world traveler. I believe in all peoples and that we all need to, you know, come together and really um, strive for the survival of this world and the opportunities for everybody. So that's that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> that's a good nutshell. You know, a lot of gold I'd nuggets say. There. Yeah, well, I'd say that's nutshell. a very, that's a fantastic nutshell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow. So exciting to have you to be a part of this book too, with all your gold nuggets. And um, so I, what, you know, where, what would you say to your younger self with all the start overs that you've had? Now, granted, you probably wish some of them would not have happened, but you have learned <laughs> lessons and it's made you this strong woman that you are who could probably feels like she could go out and conquer anything that she wants to. And we don't get that in life by never falling down. You know, um, that the, the ego thinks they can do a whole lot, but you know, it's those experiences and learning from those mistakes that actually really build us up to who we are. That's so true. And actually I came from um, a mentally ill mother and a pretty abusive relationship with her. And rather than telling myself at a young age, I want to thank my inner child because that inner child just kept saying, you're okay, <laughs> get up, keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's been a thread throughout my life. And uh, so I thank that little one who's me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, so many of us get caught up in the negative and it really takes a lot of cleansing which is often really looking deep inside, you know, what do I really want? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Okay, now I have to pivot because I just lost this job or my, I've actually been widowed twice. So, you know, how do I step up and get forward from that? It was not easy. But I realized, you know, I was young, I have to move on with life. And we all, if we have that attitude, it's amazing. And so I've come out through my years, it's actually been climbing a ladder, always getting better. And now I live a very blessed and I'm very grateful life. So we can all do it, but we have to really work on it. Mm, absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Annie. Great to hear more about, um, more about you. And so you. next up, we've got uh, Patty that we're going to welcome to the show. Patty, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me here. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me this morning. And to Linda, Linda Sunshine West, thank you so much for inviting me to participate in your book, Momentum. I had a great time uh, uh, working with Gary. Gary, thank you so much for, for honoring who I am and who we all are, and especially Linda, to bring this to fruition. It's been pretty exciting and, and amazing. Awesome. So tell us about your chapter in the book. Okay, so my chapter is the bonus chapter, the last chapter mm -hmm. of the book, and it's all about keeping up the momentum. It's all about taking time to pause and breathe into your belly and CAG. Mm -hmm. 
center, align and ground into yourself to become conscious, clear and congruent. And when you're congruent, you know, able to to pull your body, your mind and your spirit together, you can collaborate with others as we did uh, beautifully with Linda in this book. And it's all about serving, serving others, not to receive from the other, but to give from your core essence and to help others thrive. And that's what what my business is all about is helping people thrive in their personal and their professional relationships. Mm. And uh, so it was awesome to take Linda on this, uh, this hike. I am an avid uh, hiker backpacker was in the day. And um, I, I know all about that, you know, climbing that mountain. I, I hiked up to the top of Mount Whitney. But more importantly, where I came from is as a child, I witnessed the bruising of domestic violence. And at six years old, I stomped my right foot and I said, I'm never going to let that happen to me. From now on, I am a businesswoman. So <laughs> up went the blinders and forward I went and became a successful businesswoman. And uh, ultimately, I made VP at uh, Warner Brothers Motion Pictures and decided, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be here the rest of my life. I have art and music and creativity. I want to help other people. I want to impact the world in a different way. So what am I going to do? And, and so I made the choice to resign from Warner Brothers and then studied art therapy. And so hence, Unib of Soul is a resource center to help others thrive. Oh my gosh, what a blessing to the world you are. And don't we need a sprinkle of you across the planet? Thank you so much. Absol yeah. Absolutely. I love the way that you gave us a synopsis of, of your chapter and um, some insight into what people can gain if they read that, because we already need that. Next mm -hmm. up, we're going to invite Kristen to the show. And Kristen, welcome to the show. Great to have you join us. Thanks for inviting me. It's great to be here. Thank you, Linda, for putting this together. I am so excited. I have my book here as well. <laughs> so yes, that was chapter four. And uh, it was called uh, Taking Little Steps. And I'm a computer scientist. And anyone that knows about subroutines and procedures and all of that, you know that you can't just write a million lines of codes and figure it all out from just one big program. So it's about making little, little, little sub chapters, if you might say, and um, breaking it down to little steps. Mm -hmm. So that's what my chapter was on. But isn't that the truth, though? And and we, you know, everything has to. We have to do those little baby steps to get to where we are. And everywhere, and every single one of them has nuggets in them of gold to help. And every single one of them is kind of like you're putting on your pack. You know, you keep putting stuff in your pack to carry you with, to, to use in your lifetime. So absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So where can people find you um, and what you, you know, any, any other projects that you have going on? Sure, yeah. Um, I am the founder of Miracle Mastermind. And in that, I interview people. I used to meet with people before COVID and mm -hmm. I interview people to give hope in honor of my late brother. I have a pretty traumatic background. Most people think I don't, but I'm an incest survivor. Um, and I also have dyslexia, so it was hard getting through school. I was set back a year. Um, but if you just keep working and striving, you will make it. It's kind of like this book. It took two years, but here we are. <laughs> so um, my, on Facebook, uh, my name at the bottom is how you find me, Kristen Miracle. And then I have a group that's called Miracle Live Mastermind. And that's how you find me. That is awesome. You know, you are I'm an advocate for special needs and disabilities. So, you know, you are a true testament of not letting any challenge in your life get, get in the way because dyslexia can totally affect, you know, writing and reading and understanding and being able to, to do the, the, those core things that you have to do in education. So, um, you know, God bless you. And, and, you know, thank you for being a cheerleader and, you know, 
you're holding the banner for, you know, to be able to say, hey, listen, don't let it get in your way. You just got to keep going. That's right. Thank yeah. you. And you guys, that's all your core. That's everyone's core, you know, denominator here is, is everyone's got challenges and we cannot sit around and cry like a three-year-old. We have to keep going. We have to keep moving. And COVID is really, really, um, boy, it has taught us a lot of stuff, hasn't it? It absolutely sometimes has. I just want to. Yeah, sometimes I just want to cry like a three. I know it's okay. We can do that. Like I tell my kids, you got two two minutes, and so you got to move on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my goodness! Let's invite David to this to this show, shall we? David, welcome to the show. Hello. Good morning. Great Hi. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. Um, I just want to say thank you to Linda and Gary. Uh, just, I, I know I've, well, I've known Linda for quite a few years and, uh, I, how do I want to say this? It was a blessing to have met her when I did in my life. Uh, Linda and I have quite a few friends, uh, that are, uh, mutual one of which is uh, Brian Smith. I, I, I don't know who met him first. I, I want to say I did. Um, but I do know that uh, we've been playing golf for many years. And I'm actually looking forward to I, I get to play with him again on, on Thursday. Uh, I, I, where do I want to go with this? This book, if you haven't read it, there's some amazing people in this book. And I think just... It's, it's not too much. I think you should purchase it and uh, a lot of good nuggets. I, every time I read it, I've read it like three or four times now, I get really great messages um, from the authors. And I want to say thank you to all of you that have contributed to this book as well, because it really is. Linda, you did a great job. Thank you. And I'm sure I, I met Brian first. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No we'll, we'll have to we'll have to chat about that. Okay, we'll compare notes. <laughs> date date lines and everything. So, what is your chapter about, David? Uh, my chapter is all about purpose, um, and it, it's kind of funny the the way that it was written. Um, we're actually playing golf uh, when I when I get to meet Linda, and I'm kind of just in my chapter. We we do discuss about. And my philosophy is we're all on this planet to help each other. Um, Patty points out that we're, we're here to serve. And I, I truly believe that um, the more you serve, uh, well, I'm going to say the collective, the world or any community you're working with, then that's, that's why we're here. Uh, the more you do of it, the more you get in return, um, the more you help others, the more you get back. And I'm, I'm a full advocate to that. Absolutely wonderful. Where can people find you? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of places uh, <laughs> through my businesses. <laughs> directly, directly, you can you can send me an email at askdave at blacklockdesigns.com. I'll, I'll respond to you directly. I'm on Facebook. Um, yeah, that you just Google my name. You you won't have a hard time finding me. I'm mm -hmm. also a realtor. That's one of the things I love doing is helping others with real estate, but not, I guess I got my real estate license because it keeps my pulse on the market, which is a good thing. Mm, definitely right now. It's a great thing. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing David and let's welcome Gary to the show. Shall we? Gary, our ghost. <laughs> no, it, it. It's an honor to be part of the bar. Gary, it is awesome to have you join us. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you are one of the head haunches in this whole collaboration, right? Well, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I mean. <laughs> As, as the ghostwriter, I look at myself as kind of uh, the tether, pulling everybody mm. together and drawing out the stories from people. Um, right. All the content comes from the contributors. They provided all the rich wisdom that's in the book. And 
I kind of just teased it out a little bit. Uh, when I write my own work as author, uh, I look at myself as John Lennon or Paul McCartney. I fancy myself, but when I'm <laughs> on other people's stuff, I'm more like Ringo Starr. You know, you have to play the drums up or down depending upon who, the person you're working with and what the requirements of the song are. So you have to be mm -hmm. ideal session mm -hmm. you go and check. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it was like hurting cats, but, um, but everything, <laughs> but everything <laughs> was something wonderful to the table. Um, everybody was inspiring. I learned a lot from everybody. Um, some of the things that were in the book, I didn't even realize uh, I was already doing. Um, others, uh, I took it a step further from what I learned from the stories. Um, and also what I wanted to do was to have each piece be self-contained. So each one was a, a mini short story. So you could see the individual contributor's journey. But I also wanted continuity throughout the whole book so that there was a storyline from beginning to end and people would want to read the whole thing, that they would follow Linda's journey. And I think uh, one of the things that worked so well was talking to all of these successful people and realizing that every single one of them overcame something to get to where they are. And uh, Linda was exceptionally brave throwing herself out there um, and willing to admit uh, when she stumbled and fell um, and to explore and share how she got through those things and learned from them and kept going. Um, mm. And there, there were obstacles in creating the book too uh, because getting 13 contributors together is not an easy task. Um, but Linda was a perfectionist and, uh, and, and he got it done. That's awesome. That is awesome. And can, you know, you, you have a very key point there. Continuity in a book with collaborators is so key because it's like it, watching somebody who's kind of little, little, little all over the place, you can really lose somebody. But when you have collaboration, you definitely have got, got to have that continuity, unless it's all specific stories that are totally unrelatable, but, you know, in a very big way. So what is your chapter? Well, actually, I, I didn't contribute my own individual chapter. I just work with each individual um, okay. author on his or her uh, section. And uh, so uh, you'll have to read my own work to find out my own story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then that, that leads into where can people find your work, right? Okay, so um, I am all over Amazon. Uh, so my novel came out uh, this spring, Little Miss of Dark County, The Origins of Annie Oakley. It's historical fiction. Um, <laughs> one of the tips um, that I gleaned from the book was manifesting. <laughs> and uh, I manifested quite a bit as I worked on the book and the screenplay, and I've actually sold film rights uh, to the book thanks to this project that I worked on. Um, so wow. <laughs> deal to this. That uh, is uh, awesome. Look at you go. You've done this a couple of times, right? Oh, yes. Every project is different. Every collaborative project. Sometimes I'm very far behind the scenes working with authors and collaborating. Sometimes I'm more at the for at, at center of it as a credited ghostwriter. Um, but you can find me just on Amazon looking at my name, Gary M. Krebs. Uh, my website for my services is gmkwritingandediting.com. Uh, and my name is Gary M. Krebs at gmail.com. I also work, uh, having been in publishing for over 30 years, um, I'm also a literary agent. So mm -hmm. I selectively take on projects to represent and bring to book publishers as well. So I think having that experience as a publisher and as an editor it's unusual for a writer to have, but I also know the full range of the reader's experience and also what will drive sales. So I, I, I hope to bring that to every project I work on. Absolutely, absolutely. Gary, you have a lot of value to offer. Gary, I'd like to know, um, you know, we're talking about momentum and pivoting and change during a time um, of, of uncertainty. What were the challenges of publishing this book during 2020 with COVID? Oh my, uh, well, I think every author uh, has been struggling terribly uh, during COVID because you can't do any, you couldn't do any appearances to promote the book. Uh, speaking for myself, my novel came out right in the heart of uh, the pandemic when things shut down. So I had 
three or four events canceled, and that would have been at least uh, 1,500 in book sales just gone. Um, mm. And I don't know that they'll ever be recovered because people want new books to promote. So I feel uh, the pain for all authors, um, and this one is no different. The good thing is that Linda is very uh, technologically savvy, has done a lot of brilliant marketing with with web with um, web videos and things like that, and working all of the contributors into the, the marketing plan, so that uh, they were tailored marketing pieces uh, for every single contributor, which I think was really smart. And I encourage uh, all authors to do things like that. Um, the uh, other thing is that uh, most book sales now happen to be uh, online and virtually through Amazon, mainly because with, well, the change over to digital, uh, bookstores aren't getting as much traffic. They certainly aren't getting traffic because of uh, COVID. So um, book sales are actually up. If you look at what's been selling on Amazon, whether it's print books, e-books, or audio books, which are red hot. So people are anxious for content. So mm -hmm. nice. this uh, shouldn't discourage people. Uh, content, good content will still be found. Good, good awesome. That's awesome. I, I want to come back to you again later, to you and Linda, because I want to know what it was like launching this book virtually. Because a lot of people want to know about um, how to do that. So that's a great question. So before we move on to that question, um, I would like to introduce Kim Gloss. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Magical. Kim, tell us a little bit about um, your contribution to Momentum. So my chapter is Leading Others with Courage to Fearless Freedom. And I know what it feels like to live in fear. And I know how it feels to be on the other side of any fear that we face and road mapping ourselves through courage. So that's what I share in the book and helping people overcome fear where, you know, we, I kind of echo what several people have said today. We're all on a journey. We're just in a different place. And so you, you may have faced something in your life that's a little bit ahead of someone else. And that's the power of collaboration. And thank you, Linda and uh, Gary, for this opportunity. Um, I've been in several collaboration books and have written my own Unshakable Courage book. And I love collaborating um, and sharing because we all are in a different journey. And yet we also help empower uh, other people along our journey. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yes. So where can people find you? So they can find me out on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Kim with a Y as in yellow. So my website mm -hmm. is kymglass.com. And uh, that's how you can find me. Oh, wonderful. Gosh, I'm so encouraged today. And so my momentum is huge for anything. You feel like you could do anything. Yay. Yay. <laughs> wow. Thank you guys for sharing your stories and just the things you've overcome. Just the little brief things that you've shared are just so helpful because everybody has challenges right now. There is nobody in this. And it's so amazing, isn't it? There's nobody in this world who's without challenges right now. So we really, it's like a unified front of courage and moving on and moving forward and salvaging what we have to make a better world for everybody. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, Rajetti, you're muted. Linda, we, we heard you had some challenges producing the book. Um, can you tell us what your biggest challenge was and how you overcame that challenge and why you wanted to overcome it to produce this book? Well, you know, my biggest challenge was my own self. Like I, oftentimes we are our biggest challenge, right? We get in our own way. I, my mindset, like I got started, I'm a kind of person who I get really excited at the beginning of something. And then as the project goes on, I'm like, oh, this is going to take forever. And I get discouraged because I like 
I'm, you know, like, I like that instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So how did I overcome that? Well, one is that I gave myself instant gratification on a daily basis throughout the book. So whether it was reaching out to somebody and having a conversation or like, sometimes I would be scared to reach out to Gary and tell him, Gary, I'm not ready, you know, but I realized that I had to do it. So I would reach out to Gary and say, I'm not ready at, with this piece yet. And so that was like a, it was such a great um, opportunity for me to grow through my own challenges that I was facing on my own throughout this book project. And one of those was facing people with bad news or with like, this isn't going to go off. I wanted it to be released last year and it didn't happen. And so I started feeling inadequate. I started feeling like there was something wrong with me and I was going to disappoint every single person in the book. And then I just had to keep going forward, keep going forward to make it happen. So really it was that, um, honestly, it was, I didn't have the money to pay everybody back. You know, I, I had invested the money in other areas of the book process. So I couldn't quit. I couldn't quit. And that was actually a blessing that I didn't have because if I had, you know, expendable cash, I probably would have just paid everybody back and just quit. And I'm so glad I didn't because like, you know, Gary mentioned, you know, sometimes it's the, the challenges that we have in our lives from our past, you know, those, those will get in our way, but what are we going to do to keep moving forward? And for me, it, what it, the lesson it taught me is that I don't need to give up. I've given up so many times in my life, you know, thousands and thousands of times I've been a quitter. Like I used to call myself a quitter. And this book here was so much more like Dave was saying, you know, it was so much more than just putting out a book. This deep down in my soul, this was something I had to do to show myself that I could start something and finish it. it feels and I have now started and finished. Yeah, it feels amazing. Yes. Now I've proven very myself empowering. I can do that. Yeah, very empowering. Absolutely. So much. So Gary, Gary, how did you pull it all together? I mean, being <laughs> having so many contributors, pulling this together <laughs> during COVID, how did you do it? Tell us, you know, the practical steps that you took, even when you had the challenges, because I want people that's watching the show now and, and who are stuck, people who want to quit right now. Or they're afraid. How they did, don't think they, they or they're do afraid. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, tell us what that was like for you. Well, the first thing is to make sure you understand what the book is and what the vision of the book is. And so that's the upfront uh, hard work, hard lifting that we had to do. Uh, so Linda and I spent a lot of time talking about um, what was the metaphor going to be. Um, and we came up with the uh, climbing mountain metaphor and it ended up working really well. And that became the connective thread from one story to the next. Once we had that, it was mapping things out so that every contributor spoke to a very different topic. We didn't want overlap. We didn't want redundancy. We didn't want it. We wanted um, it to feel as if the reader was going along with Linda up and down the mountain. And so if there were parts that were jumbled or out of order or repetitive, we thought it would hurt, hurt the experience. Once we had all of that locked down, then it was a question of working with everyone's schedules. And uh, with all of these wonderful people being very busy entrepreneurs, that was probably the hardest part of it was just getting uh, people, uh, of getting the availability of people. So folks had to um, uh, be responsive, whether it was via email or phone call or video or however it was, and then adapting to the, the way that worked best for that individual. And everybody was a little different, which is fine. Um, but uh, the timing had to work out because the best way to do a story, uh, a, a complete narrative like this is to do it in order and so that way you don't lose that thread. And we really wanted to have that journey be, uh, have some continuity to it. So um, we tried really hard to keep it in a, in a relative order according to how it would appear in the book. And so we would um, create a draft and the contributor would read it, Linda would read it, it would go through a couple of drafts. We didn't want anything to go through without uh, every single contributor satisfied and happy with the end result. Um, so we worked really hard to refine the pieces. And of course, 
when the whole thing was done, we re we reviewed it all over again from the beginning with all the stories together. And um, all that hard work really did pay off. Um, every book is different. So you have to really adjust to uh, what kind of book it is, who the collaborators are, who the audience is, who's going to read it. Um, and I think there are a lot of things that um, uh, Linda did right with this, um, which we can get into if we have time, but uh, you can see it from the end product. Oh, fantastic. I, I do want to ask, you know, one problem a lot of people have had during COVID is they say everything became so much more expensive. So you've published before COVID. Um, was the cost more during COVID when you published this book? Well, that, that question should go more to Linda because I'm not privy to uh, the, that part of the arrangement. Um, but I will say from a publishing standpoint that uh, costs for self-publishing or hybrid publishing didn't seem to change all that much to me. Um, I did notice, obviously, as a literary agent that between April and I would say August, the, the publishing industry uh, did shut down a mm -hmm. lot. No editors, some editors were working from home. They weren't responding to emails, they weren't responding to queries or proposals, they weren't reviewing manuscripts that had been turned in per the contract. But then uh, as soon as August started to roll around and we got into September, it was the exact opposite. Suddenly everybody was catching up and uh, I made right. quite a few deals uh, in August and September as an agent. So I think that's very positive for the business as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so from my perspective, um, it, it's interesting because I had never done a book like this, you know, that was a big collaboration book. I had done my own book before and, you know, there were very little costs involved in doing my own book. You know, I published it through you know, using Amazon self-publishing and doing this book, you know, there were other expenses because there were more people involved. And so I would, for from my perspective, but I, it's not, I'm not comparing apples to apples, you know, I'm comparing totally apples to some other kind of food, like chocolate, <laughs> there we go, because, because it's completely different. So I don't know how much it would have been to do this pre-COVID, but I can share that um, we started pre-COVID and then we published, you know, during COVID. And for me, as you asked the question earlier, uh, Brigetti, I think it was um, about, you know, the launch, like doing the launch. For me, I've done over 3000 live videos. For me, it was like a no brainer. I got to do a live video. That's how we're going to launch this. Like that was just all I saw was live video launch. And it was, it was so fantastic. We ended up doing a two hour launch. The majority of the authors were able to hop on and join us and come and share, you know, about who they are and, and um, you know, about their chapter and stuff. And that was I, part of that was what contributed to us becoming a best-selling book in six hours. So definitely the live video is a way to go because you're able to you know, bring more people in that are interested in what you're doing and being able to hear from you. Right. So that's why I would highly recommend anybody do that live video aspect. And we did it like a red carpet interviewing kind of style. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, I, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because that, that was something exceptional about your launch. Um, so for those who missed that, um, tell us a little bit how you did that red carpet effect of your book launch virtually. Well, I have a, a friend, you know, I've, I've been on the red carpet interviewing stars. And so when you do something, you know, when you insert yourself into a room, you meet people in that room. Right. So I ended up meeting this woman, uh, Crystal Richardson, who also does red carpet interviewing and she's known as the red carpet um, empress. And so I was like, Crystal, will you do, will you interview everybody for the launch party. And she's like, of course I'll do it. So it was awesome because we got to have an outsider because normally I would do the interviews, but I was like, I wanna be part of it. You know, I wanna be part of the interview process, not doing the interviewing. So I brought Crystal in and she really gave us, you know, the red carpet treatment and, and everybody. She asked some really great questions that helped to tap into everybody's brilliance. And, you know, sometimes when interviewing, like you guys know, you've interviewed people and stuff, but you know, sometimes, the brilliance isn't tapped into as much. And Crystal did a really great job of just tapping into everybody and how amazing they are. I'm so honored and blessed to have the people in this book that are in here because as you read through the book, it's a story. And not all of these things actually happen because you know Gary and I had to figure out how can we make it so it's realistic 
yet it's it's a fun and interesting story. So I feel like I've golfed with Dave Blackford. And, you know, I'm not a golfer. I have done golfing, but I don't even know if that's a term, done golfing. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never golfed with Dave, you know? And so it's really interesting. And like Annie and I, you know, we met in this, in this grocery store, you know, while I was all angry and stuff. And that did not happen. But it's really interesting how I feel like I'm <laughs> Annie in a grocery store. I've read the book so many times. You know, and I just I love the way the story is told and it, it goes through that metaphor of climbing up the mountain and then getting that momentum to come back down. And there's a saying that I love to say is like, you know, because it's 13 lessons from action takers who change the world. Now, we can manifest, dream, hope, pray, you know, desire all we want. But if something's staring us right in the face and we don't actually grab it and take action for it, mm -hmm. nothing is going to happen. So that's right. what these people represent. They represent people who take action. They have an idea, they want a result, and they have actually taken the action to make it happen. And that's why I wanted them in this particular book, because it is all about action. Right. Amen. Amen. I think that summarizes it very, very nicely, um, mm -hmm. you know, just emphasizing the the point of actually mm -hmm. taking action. How about you all hold up the book? I think that, <laughs> that's, that actually looks awesome. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> That is amazing, amazing. Super congratulations to each one of you for pulling this amazing book together in 2020. You know, there's been so many sad stories going around, and today is a happy story of how you can gain momentum. So please go out and get the book. We're going to do a quick round, Robin, of uh, final words before we close the show. Kim, can we start with you? Sure. And give us a gold nugget, one gold nugget. Whatever it is that you want to accomplish, move through your fear with courage and say yes and let the path unfold. You don't have to know it all to get started. Mm, amen. Good advice. Annie, how about you? What's your gold nugget? Oh. Okay, while we wait for Annie to unmute, um, Patty, can you give us your gold nugget? Yes. How about making time today, five minutes to pause and breathe and CAG to center, align and ground into yourself to get conscious, clear and congruent. Mm -hmm. Love that. And enjoy Thank you, Patsy. Annie, what's your gold nugget for everyone? So always have your dreams and goals in front of you. Know that you can change them at any time, but believe in them and really set out an action plan and really just really focus and believe that you can have whatever you want because <laughs> usually it comes to you. Awesome. Dave, belief. what's your gold nugget? You know, it's it's not mine, but I'm, I'm going to plagiarize here. Uh, <laughs> It's a quote. It's a it's a quote from Jim Rohn. Uh, in order to have more, you have to become more. And reading this book, you will become more. Mm. Awesome, Kristen. What's your gold nugget? Mine would be: don't let your past define you, and don't let any disability or things that have happened to you make you small and ashamed, be bold and live your life to its fullest because there's such greatness out there. Mm, awesome. Amen yeah. to that. And Kristen knows what she's talking about. If you want to know more about Kristen, please go ahead and reach out to her. Yeah. Gary, what's your gold nugget? So everybody's been so inspirational. I'll go on the practical route, <laughs> which is that <laughs> um, you can definitely publish your book and everybody has a book in him or her self. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just make sure that you do it professionally. Don't <laughs> please go on to uh, you know, <laughs> correct and get your book done because uh, it will be disappointing to yourself and to your readers. Make sure that you get uh, the right team working on it and you do everything professionally. Um, it's like anything else. You know, if you want to uh, you know, fly a plane, uh, you have to go to flight school. You don't just go <laughs> in the cockpit and start flying, right? So you have right. to go through the training. Yes. 
Absolutely. I think that is that is um, valuable advice no matter what you do. Um, you know, you've got to get the right tools to get the job done properly. You can get the cheaper tool, but is it going to get the results that you actually want in the end? So that's a gold nugget right there. Linda, what's your gold nugget? Uh, so many to choose from, but I would say stick to it, you know, stick to itiveness and having that no matter how many times you want to quit on something. Think about the end result that you're going to get. When you quit, how do you feel? When you keep going, how do you feel? Which way do you want to feel? You get to decide. Mm, amen. Oh, my love gosh. Those, that is amazing. Choices. Love those choices. I, yeah. I, I like that, you know, choose, decide what it is you want to feel at the end. I really, yeah. like, I really like that. Yeah. Thank you cool. so much oh, to each my one gosh. of you. Yeah. I don't yes. even know where to start. Um, I know. I think there's. A lot of value in what you guys have shared and guys please go out and get this book um momentum yeah. to get the full story and get the benefit out of what you know how you can pivot with purpose and move forward with momentum thank you very very mm -hmm. much to each one thank of you, you all and share the video <laughs> share it so people can find this book yeah. everybody right. watching share everybody on here share and that way the book you know we can just share all this positivity because we want it to circle the globe, man. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you can find it on want... Barnes and Noble as well as on Amazon. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. that was going to be my last question. Where can they find the book? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You guys can find it there, and I'll put links down below as well. I'll send you guys the links for that. All right. Thank you so much. Y'all have a Thank blessed you. day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for, for watching now. and Thank remember you. to write good stuff Thanks and be fine. A big pleasure. Take care, everyone. Until next week, it's goodbye from the Writer's Corner live show. Oh. <laughs>